What's up guys, Chris here with another Four Nights of the Apocalypse manga chapter review. And I have to say, this one, like last chapter, was not super eventful. It was primarily just Percival and Meliodas talking and just going through Leonis in, in like a tour type thing. And we got to see some old familiar faces and even some name drops. And the very end of the chapter alludes to the potential reason for why the Four Nights are being assembled. Now, that is something that we're definitely going to get into the next chapter because that was just a big old cliffhanger unless Bryce Meliodas is about to say something to Percival asking for his help. Lancelot shows up and then everyone gets united and then we see all four knights in one place. So I'm very ha curious to see how things are going to work out. But before we get into the chapter, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help. As well as following me on social media at my Instagram and Twitter as I do updates on certain reviews and videos that I'm planning to do. As well as the fact that on Twitter I'm being a lot more active now, like just talking to my followers. So if you wanted to see what I'm talking about randomly, go ahead and check that out. Also, if you haven't already, I just want to promote this. I made a blind manga review series for the Magi Manga. I will have a link up above. It's honestly a very fun read and I do want this series to do well as I want to do more blind review series on this channel. It's something that I've wanted to do for well over a year and I'm finally doing it. So I really appreciate the support. I know this isn't the video to do that, but it was my most recent video and I do want to get some attention towards it. But without further ado, let's get into chapter 52 of the Fortnite the Apocalypse. Aptly titled Meliodas and Percival. And I like the little gag at the beginning of the cover page, essentially just Percival and Meliodas looking at each other uninspiringly, just stay it's calling each other pips squeeze. That's a nice little joke to put in at the start of the chapter. But anyway, we pick off right where last week left us with Percival questioning that Meliodas is actually the king of Leonis. Meliodas smiles saying he sure is, but Percival just flat out starts laughing saying that he can't, he can't, there's no way he can believe that, that a kid his age is serving as a king and that's just crazy. As Meliodas is just being like, I'm older than you, at least. Percival says that he's 16, asking how old Meliodas is. And Meliodas basically is basically dodges the question, saying that it doesn't matter. But he also realizes that, well, his son is 16, without really saying it. 16, that's the same as my and he just cuts him, and then Percival just cuts himself off. But Meliodas just says that they'll talk later, saying that it's great to meet Percival, and he wants to personally welcome him to Leonis. And I like this little two-page spread. It's just really sweet and heartwarming just seeing the previous protagonist just meeting the new protagonist of the story. I like moments like this in sequels, and this one really feels like Nakamu Suzuki is just putting a hell of a lot of care into it, because I do see Meliodas in the type of passing of the torch to Percival to be the leader of the Four Knights. Percival is asking, is he really the king? So did you make him take me here? Stops and... Percival just keeps asking questions, as he's asking why he was called here, what are the Fornets of the Apocalypse, and if he could truly destroy the world, and what King Arthur is really after, or what he's like, and why did his grandfather have to die in the first place. Meliodas is actually kind of concerned because he didn't realize that Vargas had died. He looks over at Vargas' cape and helm, and then he grabs Percival saying that he plans to discuss everything once everyone's all assembled. But right now, he invites Percival for a walk, and he just tells Percival to just call him Meliodas. We stop by Hendrix's clinic as we see Dreyfus and Hendrickson just greeting Meliodas and Percival, but Hendrickson just gets incredibly excited over what Percival did to heal Hendrickson's back, thinking of it as a type of gel and wants to examine it, how he got it, etc, etc. You know, Hendrickson being very, uh, very excited about something new that could help with his, uh, medicines and stuff like that and Melody was just he just zips away with Percival being like okay let's let's go on to the next stop as this could probably take a while and I like how Percival after seeing this just thinks that he should bring Nazians here too because Nazians and Hendrickson would get along fantastically which is honestly an interaction I really want to see we then go to the forge the best forge in Leonis, where this is where Hauser is, and it's his home. And Percival just says that he met Hauser and how he made the dragon sword for him. We then get to see someone walk out thanking Meliodas for a training sword to help with the blacksmiths. And we find out that this is Zeal, someone who wanted to become a holy knight, but then decided to become a blacksmith instead. Funny fun fact, because this character was, unless you are a really big Seven Deadly Sins fan, Zeal is actually Gila's younger brother. That's wild. It's actually really nice to see some of the minor characters get some spotlight. If you don't remember this character, it's perfectly fine, but this is honestly something that I really liked because 
even some of the minor characters are being shown to us, and I can really appreciate that, and I can't wait to see more. I able to see everyone else in Leona is how everyone's aged up since the end of the, of the Seven Daily Sins. But then we move on to the bazaar and the marketplace. Nolio is saying that they basically get a lot of folks like Northern Barbarians and people from Benwick to the south and north, and it's just a bunch of different foods and goods coming in and out every day of the kingdom as everyone's greeting Meliodas. So that's one nice thing to say because it does seem like Benwick is fine, at least for the moment. Like I said in my Lancelot theory video, it's possible that Benwick was attacked by Camelot, but that might not be true for all we know. But we'll figure things out as we go along. First of all, asking what these rumbling he's hearing is about. And before Meliodas tells him, he says before that, they go to a place called the Black Cat's Yawn and grabs a fish pie as the two of them begin to enjoy it. But we then flip over to the next page and it's revealed that they are riding on top of a giant. So that's actually really cool. So Leonis has giants in the kingdom now too, similar to how like presumably King of the Ants Kingdom is like fairies and giants. This is actually something really nice, and I'm glad that there are places that were the different clans are basically being together. That's something really nice. And we even see a fairy, too, selling berries. And there's fresh from Benwick, which again states that Benwick should be fairly fine right now. That's something I really, I'm really happy about. But I'm still curious about the Lancelot thing. So anyway, they begin to munch some stuff. They pay the giant, as the giant seems to be a taxi service working in Leonis, which is really nice because who wouldn't want to be up high, carried by someone who is really strong and can go long distances with only a few footsteps? That seems like a lot of fun. I would, I would do a giant taxi service. That's honestly something really cool. But now we've cut to Meliodas bringing Lancelot up a hill, saying that, well, all the different cl clans basically intermingled during the Holy War, and now there aren't really that many in the kingdom, but it looks like they get along fairly well. Percival then asks if there's anyone from the Demon Clan there, and I like Meliodas' response, he's like, you're a funny guy, what kind of weirdo wants to live with demons? Obviously, the Holy War is still fresh, so it's very obvious that people wouldn't want to live or talk with demons. It's very possible that people know Meliodas is, is a demon. You know, the people of Leonis probably know Meliodas is a demon, but they're okay with that for the fact that he saved their lives and ended the Holy War. Percival mentions that he went to a village of demons in Dolphler, which we know where Gother is and looking after stuff. And Meliodas is like, oh, that village. And then Percival starts talking in the demon tongue, saying how he made a whole lot of friends in that village. And Percival's trying to brag me like, I bet you're wondering what I just said. And Meliodas starts talking in the demon tongue as well. And he states that the Edel in that village just has a long way to go. As Percival is also shocked, knowing the demon tongue. He even asks Meliodas how he knows that. And Meliodas is just like, well, I want to know how you know it also. But we then stopped our conversation as Meliodas has Percival look over the tallest mountain of Leonis to look over the wall protecting them and onto the vast land, seeing the nice views of like the little towns and villages past Leonis. He then points to a little castle atop of the mountain in the distance, saying that that is a small nation called Darkmont. And he says that it's led by Griamor, someone who used to be a holy knight, which means Griamor actually was... Uh, he actually started his own kingdom, meaning him and Veronica are probably king and queen of that kingdom right now. So again, a nice, interesting bit of information that I really can appreciate. It's nice to see what how Grand War is doing. Now, let's see how Gil Thunder is doing with Margaret. And then all the princesses and their relations and their boyfriends, husbands, whatever... We'll see how they all go. I still want to see Elizabeth. She's like 34 years old right now. I want to see how she's aged. But Percival looking looking in awe, saying that everything after this little walk, it just shows that the people who live in and around Leonis are very, very happy. Meliodas smiles, but then he changes his expression as we get one two-page spread of nothing but a dark panel as Meliodas just says, that's going away soon. The people, the nations, the land, everything. As Percival's shocked looks at Meliodas, as he just flat out asks Percival, you have to help us. Ending the chapter. So we are definitely getting, in chapter 53, we will definitely, I said definitely last time, but this one time for sure, we're definitely going to get some answers on Arthur's plan, what the hell's going on, who are the four knights, why Meliodas is assembling them, and so on and so forth. So overall, I know I talk a lot in this chapter, I just stated what would happen in this chapter, because it's really nice, because... Nakba is taking the time to show us Leonis, which is something that I'm very happy with because 
We're seeing how people's lives have been. Mel Meliodas, Meliodas seems to have been a pretty great king. Giants and fairies, either giants being taxi services or maybe they're cultivating lands as well in Leonis. Two fairies coming in from Benwick, uh, giving their berries and goods. Leonis seems to be thriving fairly well, and I'm really glad to see that everything that happened in the Holy War had a positive outlook on some of the kingdoms, and everyone else seems to be living fairly happily. And the different clans are living peacefully with, with one another, but Arthur seems to threaten that. So, my theory is that Meliodas is obviously, uh, obviously bringing the Four Knights together so that they could help take down Arthur, but with how Meliodas is talking about things, it's possible that what Arthur is planning to do might actually be a hard reset to eradicate everything in the world, basically destroy the entire world and build it back up with this power of chaos. Again, this is all pure speculation. Next week, I'm fairly certain that, Melio that we're probably going to get the meeting of the Four Knights, maybe a few interactions, and then we'll get the explanation either by the mid midpoint or end of next chapter, or the following chapter. Either way, it was really nice to see some characters like Hendrickson and Dreyfus again, even though we saw them last chapter. We actually saw them have more than maybe like two or three lines, and how Hendrix is just obsessed with uh, finding new medicines. It's a nice little world building for this series. It's very nice. And I can't wait to see what happens next. But yeah, all the background information was honestly something really nice, seeing how thriving Leonis is. How Leonis seems to be doing a pretty kick-ass job as a king, despite being his usual lackadaisical self. But yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next. We're definitely going to see at least Tristan and Elizabeth next chapter. We have to. It's very nice doing these types of reviews again. I like doing Four Nights. I'm going to keep doing this no matter what. I'll tr I'm going to try and get some other theory videos or discussions done at some point in the future. So look out for that. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon and Coffee accounts. Links in the description below and in the title card up above. If you want to support the channel more directly. As well as with Patreon, if you have... It is open to all patrons. Any larger videos that I do that aren't chapter reviews will in fact be up there at least two to three days earlier than my initial planned release date. So you'll be able to see my videos a lot sooner and it also helps support the channel as I do want to make more larger videos aside from my chapter reviews. And again, just want to stick this in here again, please support the Moggy Blind Review Series as I will have that linked in the title card above as well at the beginning of the video and right now if I can. So, because I really want these blind review series to do well, as I do have other series I want to do blind reviews of. But yeah, with all that said and done, hope you guys like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos, follow me on my social media, at the Greek Weave on Twitter and Instagram, and I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have an awesome day.